In aviation, nothing good ever comes after the phrase, watch this. Except in this case, watch this. Pretty cool, huh? It fits. So how did I fix it without replacing this big white structure? Well, I wanna give a big, huge thank you to all of you who left comments in my previous video because you guys had some perspectives that I didn't have. Now, some of your suggestions I had already thought of and for various reasons I didn't wanna go that route. But then a few people suggested I put a shim between the aluminum plates and the bottom of the fuselage, which of course would lower those plates and then lower that block, which would line up the holes. That is exactly what I did and it worked perfect. Now you won't be able to see it on the screen from this angle, but between the bottom of the fuselage and these two plates, I did put a shim under there. So if we look on the bottom, and again, this is all temporary, this all has to come off, so I know my bolts are upside down and there's some missing. You can see this black piece of aluminum that I have under here. Now when I take this back off, I'm going to cut this out here so the profile is exactly the same as here but I have a spacer, which is that black aluminum, and I, I cut it right here like this, and then it, it, it's just like that under here. And of course, what that does is that lowers this down enough to where these holes line up. And what's really interesting is, you know, before I did that, when I had this block in there, you know, I'm trying to look in the hole here to see how far it has to go, and there's really no way to measure that. And so I just went to my box of aluminum, and guesstimated about the thickness of aluminum I would need for that. And I cut a piece out, drilled the holes here so I could put it under there, and it, act it, was, it was absolutely perfect. As you can see, I didn't, I didn't do anything to the holes here. You know, I didn't re-drill the holes or open up the holes, uh, and it lines up perfect. So that issue has been solved. So moving on here, I wanted to mention something. When I thought I was gonna have to replace this, you know, I took this off. Oh, and by the way, uh, this was never riveted to the firewall yet. You can see it's just held on here by some Clecos. And in just a couple minutes, I'm gonna tell you why I never riveted that yet. But so if I had to replace this, it wasn't too big of a deal. This, it, it wasn't already riveted to the firewall. I could just take it right off. But when I did take it off, I took off the, the nylon block that goes in here. And then I took off this part here because obviously these I can reuse on the new aluminum parts that I was going to get. But I'm kind of glad I did that because when I had this on here, on the side here, there's a whole bunch of bolts. There's one, two, three, four, eight. There's eight to side that hold this in there. And when I put this in originally, you know, I was just using the regular uh, nylon nuts in there. And it always kind of bothered me because I realized later that you're not supposed to use nylon nuts ahead of the firewall. And it seems like, I don't know why, but it seems like it's controversial if you can use them or not. Some people will tell you you can, some people will tell you you can't. And, you know, these are home-built airplanes. You, legally, you can do whatever you want. On my second home-built on my RANS, I had uh, nylon nuts ahead of the firewall, and the inspector wanted me to change them before they would sign it off. So, you know, if you use nylon nuts ahead of your firewall, Technically, it's legal because it's an experimental and you can do what you want. Just be aware that if you get an FAA inspector or a DAR that's going to inspect your airplane and give you an airworthiness fit, some of them, like the one I had, wouldn't do it until I changed those nuts. Now, luckily, I had a whole bench stock of the, the metal locking nuts that I could replace them. So anyway, I had the nylon nuts in here and I always kind of wanted to change them. So now that this is off, now I have an opportunity to put the, the metal locking nuts back on. Now they don't just make stuff like that up. If you have the standard aircraft handbook, this is a really great book for learning all kinds of things about aluminum and fasteners and corrosion and pretty much everything you wanna to know to maintain an airplane. And if you look here on page 142, it talks about nuts. And it talks about the nylon nuts being low temperature, which is 250 degrees or less self-locking nuts. Well, so that leaves the question, is the engine compartment hotter or cooler than 250 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't know, I've never measured it. It'd be kind of interesting to take the outside air temperature probe from the Dynon and just 
temporarily mount it up in the engine compartment and go fly and kind of see how hot it does get up there. But anyway, that's, that's what the, uh, the book says, 250 degrees. I'm going to not use any nylon nuts ahead of the firewall, so I will install that part again with the metal locking nuts. If you're going to build an airplane, I can't even tell you how handy it is to have a large bench stock of nuts and bolts and fasteners and nut plates. And what I do every year when I go to Oshkosh is I just stock up on nuts and bolts. I'm like a kid in the candy store. I just, I love buying hardware for some reason. So I have a whole selection of nut or bolts. I have a whole selection of nuts over here. This is mostly uh, rivets. Um, you know, I've got things like cotter pins, countersunk screws. I've just got a little bit of everything. Of course, when I had my Mooney and my Cherokee, they have different types of screws. Uh, so I have a bunch of screws for that too. But what I'm, we're going to use here are these AN363-1032 nuts. These are the locking nuts that don't have nylon. All right, there we go. That part is installed. I've got the locking nuts on there. Now I can put this back in here and then get this Clecoed back to the firewall. So when I'm putting these in here, you know, if you guys notice these washers, they have on one edge, it's kind of rounded a little bit. And on the other edge, if you flip it over, it's more of like a 90 degree corner. I always put the rounded edge on the nut side. So like in this case here, the rounded edge of the washer is on the outside. I don't know if you guys do that. It doesn't matter, obviously, which way it goes on or in, but I just think it kind of looks better that way. Although you really can't tell, but it's just, uh, that's just how I've always done it. Every time I put a washer on, I look for the rounded edge and I make sure that goes on the side of the, the nut. I'm weird like that. wonder how many of you guys do that too. Do you guys look and see which way your washers go on or you just put them in. We're almost done here. We just got a couple more to go. What I do is I just put all the nuts on finger tight. That way all the holes line up and then all the, the bolts go in. And after they're all in, then I can just go down the line and tighten them all up. We are back in business, guys. This is back Clico to the firewall. This piece is on, that nylon green ring is in there. You can see I've got the, the nice nuts on there. Everything's looking good. Well, now I wanna explain why I have never riveted this to the firewall yet, and why I also haven't riveted this bottom row of rivets uh, that hold the bottom of the firewall to the skin. So the reason I haven't riveted that yet is because of this, the engine mount. I've got to drill all of the mounting holes for the engine mount. Now you might be wondering what the engine mount has to do with this piece. But you'll notice this piece does go under the holes for the engine mount. And there's quite a few layers that you have to drill through here uh, for the engine mount holes. You can see I've already done the bottom. So, you know, we have the this piece of aluminum here, we obviously have the firewall, and then we have uh, this piece here, and then the steel bracket. 
Now, obviously, the steel bracket's going to come off again. I can deburr that, and I still have to get it powder coated. But there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five layers of metal that you're drilling through. And after I drill, I want to be able to separate those layers to deburr uh, each layer and make sure all the holes are perfectly clean. Well, I knew I was getting close to getting this airplane mounted on the landing gear. And I knew that before I mount the nose gear, I was going to need the engine mount so that I could drill these holes and then take everything apart, clean up the holes, and then rivet it together. Now that once it's riveted together, well, now that I, I can permanently install that nose gear. So that's why I went ahead and ordered the engine mount now. Even though I don't really need the mount now, I wanted it to drill the holes. And then I figured since I'm buying the engine mount and it's getting shipped in from Canada, I might as well get the cow at the same time. They can build one crate and the shipping would be a little bit less. So that's why I have the engine mount and the cow. I don't know yet when I'll buy the engine. I don't particularly need it yet. I want to have the airplane painted first. So I'm not in any hurry to buy the engine. But now that I have the mount, I can get the rest of these holes drilled. I can take it apart. I'll clean up the holes. And then everything on the front end here, I can actually get riveted together. So there'll be no more Clecos in here. It'll all be riveted. Well, I'll end this video here because all I have to do now is drill some holes and take things apart and clean up those holes. And that's not that exciting to watch. Plus, I think for now, I'm going to see if I can get a flight in in the cruiser today. In the next video, hopefully I will get that nose gear installed. If that, if that happens, I do have the main gear installed. I'll be able to take the airplane off the workbench. Uh, and that's pretty exciting to see it sitting on its gear for the first time. So if you guys uh, got any useful information from any of these videos, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content on the Super Duty, uh, the Cruiser, or very soon my, my secret projects I have going on. So, all right, we'll see you guys next time.